Welcome to Indiana News Desk. I'm Joe Wren. Well, flags in Indiana are flying at half staff this week in honor of former Indiana Senator Richard Luger. Luger died last weekend at the age of 87. As Barbara Brozier reports, many are remembering Luger not for his career in politics, but for how he treated people. Dick Luger's nearly half a century long political career started in the very city where he was born. He served on the Indianapolis Board of School Commissioners in the 1960s, playing a crucial role in attempting to desegregate local schools and make sure no students went hungry. He went on the school board and brought the school lunch program to the Indianapolis public school system. Nonsensical that we wouldn't have our students who were poor and needed that nutrition not participating. His work on the school board prepared Luker to take on a much larger role, Indianapolis mayor. He served for two terms and approached the job in a way no one had before. He had a very unusual sense to see the opportunity of being mayor in its largest context. You can be mayor and be manager of government, or you can be the leader of a community. Modern Indiana, an Indiana competing to be a national leader, was born at that moment. That was the moment in 67 when the first inklings of an Indiana restless for greatness began to stir. When the first efforts to shake off satisfaction with the status quo succeeded. Luger pushed forward the consolidation of Indianapolis and Marion County government to form what's known as UNIGOV. And he spoke about the importance of great cities having great universities, a vision that became reality when IUPUI opened its downtown campus in 1969. Neither Dick himself or any of us here knew how many lives he impacted or how deeply. There is no formula to calculate all those who went into public service because of his inspiration or the thousands of students who attended I, uh, IUPUI built in no small part on his vision, the tens of thousands of Indianapolis school children who benefited from his commitment to school lunch programs. That list of accomplishments grew exponentially when Luger was elected to the U.S. Senate in 1976. Let's clean house in 1976 and let's establish truth and morality in public and private life. It was the first of what would turn into six terms, making Luger the longest serving senator in Indiana history. He was known for his sharp intellect and willingness to listen to others, even when he didn't agree with their approach. And many credit much of Luger's success in Washington to his bipartisan approach when it came to addressing world issues. He was a, a Republican, of course, but uh, people like Obama and Nunn and others in Washington had a great deal of respect for him because he didn't vote straight Republican. He uh, would take any issue and study it carefully, came out with uh, what was good judgment. It's very hard for me to think of a time when I disagreed with him. Uh, we work most uh, often in the Congress in the so-called conference committees between the House and the Senate where the final judgments are made about legislative policy. And almost every issue that came up, Dick and I would be on the same side. Luger's most well-known bipartisan effort is one that would change the world forever. He worked with Democratic Senator Sam Nunn to help former Soviet states dismantle weapons of mass destruction and nuclear arsenals. With the breakup of the Soviet Union, thousands of nuclear missiles were left behind, some in unreliable hands. Many of the missiles pointed here at home. On my wall, I have a map of Russia and I have a chart showing how many warheads have been taken off of missiles, how many missiles destroyed, how many submarines destroyed. According to the Luger Center, the non-Luger program has led to the deactivation of more than 7,500 nuclear warheads. What's particularly poignant about that now is that he worked his entire career to try to constrain those weapons, to dismantle them. And now our policies are reversed. 
we are actually building new nuclear weapons, much of the world is, that has the capacity. So we need Dick Luger's voice more than ever now because we seem to have lost the momentum towards arms control. And that was what he was most uh, involved in. Despite his leadership on international affairs, Luger never lost sight of who he was representing or where he came from. The senator was very well known for being a foreign policy expert, but he loved the state of Indiana. He loved it. And he loved his, his constituents. He loved being a Hoosier. He was very proud of it. So the fact that it's you know, it's the state of Indiana right there, I think, speaks volumes about him. Luger served in the Senate until 2013, after he lost the Republican primary to Tea Party candidate Richard Murdoch. While the loss devastated Luger and his supporters, he didn't let it define his legacy. I think now, in retrospect, people are saying, you know, I think we need him back. And unfortunately, we won't have him back. And the rest of us, uh, it's up to us to carry that torch forward. He was deeply committed to public service, no question about that, and uh, had all kinds of opportunities. I know when he left the Senate uh, to pull down uh, big time jobs in terms of compensation, he didn't go that path. He kept on the path that he had been on, worked on nuclear disarmament, worked on hunger problems uh, after he, he left the Senate. So uh, I think he was rooted in the best of the Hoosier values. And that's what many Hoosiers say they'll remember Luger for the most. Not his impressive list of political accomplishments, but his character. He had an uncanny ability to talk to anyone and make them feel like someone. All in this back wall case right here, there are five volumes that are letters from constituents and uh, businesses and arts organizations, like everybody in Indianapolis. Everybody, they sent him these letters thanking him and telling him how much they appreciated his work, um, how you know, he had convinced them that politics could be real and not just entertainment and showmanship. He used to write to the spouses and family members of people who passed away, and he would write eight or ten personal notes every day. He did that for 50 years. Dick Luger was a very important person who never made others feel less important. A powerful man who took care not to make others feel weak. A leader who worked on issues of global peace and security with presidents and prime ministers, yet who gave his full attention to the student the healthcare worker, or the farmer right in front of him. My most effective work really comes in good conversation, in listening carefully, finding places where we agree. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Barbara Brozier.